Well, praise God, we're going to have Bill Warren come in just a moment, but I want to say, how many enjoyed the snow we had? Was it, wasn't that kind of neat? It, it, it goes rather quickly, but uh, Thursday afternoon, I realized I had a very busy week and wasn't even able to give attention to the word I was going to bring this morning, and Bill had a word from the Lord that he had mentioned on Wednesday, and so I text Bill, and like he always does, he said he was available to bring that this morning, and I was so glad that I heard the Lord on that because that meant all day Friday I could be out playing in the snow, and Bill had to be working on his message, so hallelujah, he's always a, a, a one that's willing to bring a word, and I appreciate so much the emphasis and the insight he brings to this house. So honor Bill as he comes this morning. We're going to look forward to the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Forgot that part. Had to plug up. All right. Yeah, that snow was surprising. Um, we got up Friday, um, Friday morning, saw it, and a buddy of mine had texted that the school was out, and um, when I got Brian up, she looked at her when she said it's a miracle. She just wanted to miss school, but it was like it's a it's a miracle. So that was um that was good, and I had the day off already, so that was really good. Um, turn in your Bible to Acts chapter twenty-seven. We're gonna walk through this um this story today, and it's gonna be if you don't have your Bible, it's fine. I think we're gonna have them up on the screen the verses up on the screen so um, um, Acts 27 verse 1 and when it was decided that we should sail to Italy they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to one named Julius a centurion of the Augustan regiment so so here Paul is on his way to court and he's he's being transferred okay so verse 2 so entering a ship of that weird word Adramedium we put to sea meaning to sail along the coast of Asia Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, was with us, and the next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly. So even though he's a prisoner, Paul is being treated with favor, okay? Um, and gave him liberty to go to his friends and receive care. So basically they're going into port, and he's told Paul he trusted him, and he said, you know, he knew he wanted to go out and visit some of his visit some of his buddies and church people and he said that's fine just be back at a certain time okay verse 4 when we had put to sea from there we sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary and when we had sailed over the sea which is also Cilicia and Pam Pamphylia we came to Myra a city of Lycia that's a whole lot of places there the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy and he put us on board so you got to get context here. So you got a centurion, you got a centurion, um, a ranking officer. You got two or three guys with you that have swords and can use them. Um, they're getting these prisoners from one place to another, and the thing is, they can they can take over a vessel. In other words, like they didn't have their own ship, they would just go to a port, and then they would just ask one of the ships where you where you headed, and if it was the same direction they were going, we'd say we're going. They just say we're going with you, and there's nothing you could do about it. I mean, that's the way the Romans were. Kind of like whenever Jesus said, if they ask you to go one mile, go two. You know, it was like because back then the Roman could say, here, carry my stuff, and you were bound to carry it for whatever it is, you're bound to carry that load one mile, no matter whether it inconvenienced you or not, they didn't care. And then that's what Jesus was saying, go ahead and carry it the extra mile, because after a mile, you're not bound anymore. You can just put it down, and somebody else will pick it up, and you just say, well, no, I, I got it another mile. So you were supposed to overwhelm them with kindness. You're supposed to overwhelm them with the um, thing. And so it, the whole thing is about is doing something God said over, over your convenience. Um, so it's overwhelm them with your cooperation. Verse 7, um, but you understand they can go from ship to ship. Okay. Verse 7, when we had sailed slowly many days and arrived with difficulty off Sinaitis, the wind was not permitting us to proceed. We sailed under the shelter of Crete off Salmon. Passing it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens near the city of Lycia. So they're starting to go against the wind here. Um, now, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Um, so Paul picks up something in his spirit. He says, This is something we shouldn't do. Um, now, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to watch the wisdom of God 
versus the wisdom of the world, okay? Verse 11, nevertheless, the centurion, the, 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 he's the military guy in charge, was more persuaded by the helmsman, he, that's the captain of the ship, and the owner of the ship than by the thing spoken by Paul. So you got this, the owner of the ship is on there, and he charges people to transport whatever it is, people or cargo or, or whatever. Um, the captain is on there, and the centurion, the Roman officer, he goes to the captain and says, hey, we got this preacher guy on here, and he says that if we sail, we're going to lose all the cargo, the ship, and, and, and our lives. Um, so, but this guy, is he, he goes, the captain of the ship is has got experience. And so he is going off of experience, and he thinks we can make it, right? But you got motivations here. The owner of the ship, is he's getting paid to transport stuff from one place to another. He don't get paid to sit at port. He gets paid to transport stuff from one place to another. So it's not a good word from the Lord for him to say that we're, we're going to stay. Well, he checks with the captain of the ship. Captain of the ship says, no, we can make it. So that's good news to him. So we got the captain's experience. The owner is greed. And, you know, once greed comes in, once money comes into play and it's greed attached to it, things get very confusing and you can do some stupid stuff. Okay? Now, you kind of lose common sense. So Paul is walking by perception and they are walking by their senses. Verse 12, and because the harbor was not suitable to, to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also if by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete opening toward the southwest and northwest and winter there. So it's saying, look, we're not going to dock here. This is not a good place to spend winter in. They didn't want to get stuck there. It's kind of like, you know, hey, we're on our way to Jamaica, and then you want to stop somewhere else. Well, anywhere else is worse than Jamaica. I mean, you don't want to stop anywhere else. Like, so let's just keep going. you got sailors on the ship with you. They're interested in bars and girls. I mean, this is just, the, I mean, they don't, they don't want to be in a place that, they don't want to be in a place that they, that they can't have fun. So they said, so they're saying, preacher says we shouldn't go, but these other guys are saying we should go. So now we got another motivation here. We got the, 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 the sailor's comfort, okay? So if you're keeping score, we have the captain's experience, the owner's greed, the sailor's comfort versus the word of the Lord. Now, when it says in that verse that the majority, that indicates that they took a vote. That's an indication that they took a vote and the word of the Lord got outnumbered, okay? So, verse 13, when the south wind blew softly, supposing that, that, that they had obtained their desire, putting out to sea, they sailed close by Crete. So, why is that important? Because it's looking like the preacher was wrong. Um, the captain would be like, you know, I told you so. South wind's blowing, we're doing good, but you have to be careful because they're walking by observation instead of by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Verse 14, but not long after, a tempestuous headwind arose called Eurycliton so when the ship was caught and could not head into the wind we let her drive and running under the shelter of an island called Claudio we secured the skiff with difficulty so now the preacher starts looking right verse 17 when they had taken it on board they used cables to undergird the ship then fearing lest they should run aground on the certest sands they struck sail and so were driven so they stopped trying to steer the boat because they can't, they take down the sail and it's driving them in, because it's driving them into the mud. They're going to lose the ship. They're going to they're going to drown and die. So they take down the sail and they just say, "Let the water take us wherever it goes." Just they're just we're going to get blown around. So now they're going with the flow instead of going off the word of the Lord. So verse eighteen, and because we were exceedingly tempest tossed, the next day they lighten the ship. So now they're throwing all the cargo off. So the owner is, it's all for naught for him now. But he's, a, they're throwing all the, all the stuff off. Um, so the owner's losing money. The people who originally own this stuff that he's trying to transport, they're losing money. And wherever that stuff's going, the people that were dependent on it, they're losing too. Um, all because they relied on experience. They relied on opportunity for gain. They re relied on majority vote. But and, there, and here comes law. So verse 19, on the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Um, they're lightening the ship. 
because it's too much weight to move through the water. So verse 20, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. So this, these heavy storms go on for two weeks, and they start to accept that they're just going to die. They just start to accept that they're going to die. Now, we sit in here and like in this, in, without all this, but you've got to imagine that they're on a ship, and we ain't talking about a ship like that we know. They, they're, on a, they're on a ship, you know, it's raggedy compared to what we're used to. But they're out there just getting thrown around. They don't have GPS. They don't have, like, you know, there's no CDs, no cell phones, no whatever. I mean, if they go down, you know, they'll just be declared dead one day because they never showed up anywhere. Um, verse 21, but after long abstinence from food, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, and because, you know, and I love this part because he couldn't resist the urge. He said, men, you should have listened to me. He had to tell them. You know, that's, that's great. And not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart. For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you and all those who sail with you. So you, um, so he gets, he, he gets a word from an angel. And let me say this. You can't just jump into a sphere of influence uninvited. And what do I mean by that? Like, David could play a violin, right? But he couldn't just show up and say, hey, if I play my violin, hey, all, the, the, the demons will leave you alone. He had, to, he had to be invited in. Joseph couldn't just show up to Pharaoh and say, hey, I, I interpret dreams, and this is what your dream means. Now, it was, there was a guy that said, hey, I did some time with this guy. They said, you know, that he interpreted dreams. So he was invited, he was invited in. Paul, Paul was trying to speak into a business sphere, and they, hadn't, and they had not invited, invited him to do that. They, they didn't listen. Um, so Paul says you should not sail. Um, now the prophecies come to pass, and everybody wants to listen now. Um, everybody's on the preacher. Now, I say that, now, and then Pastor David did a series of not long ago on angels, and here we see an angel. He says the angel of the Lord came. And, you know, we don't want to neglect, you know, that there, there are, there's a ministry of angels to us. You remember whenever Jesus was, Jesus was tempted, he said um, he was tempted um, by Satan. And then it said that the, the, angel, the angel of the Lord came to, to, to comfort him, right, to minister to him. So Paul is in the middle of this chaotic storm, and the angel of the Lord speaks a word, and Paul brightens up. Verse 25, therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. Now, we experience God in the present, the right now. But God is the beginning and the end. We experience it right now. But he's the God 10 minutes ago and 10 minutes from now. Um. We experience it as though it is happening every second. But it's been written before the foundation of the world. He doesn't... I don't know that he writes out our stupid decisions. But I do know this. He will always rewrite the script from wherever you are. No matter what dumb thing you've done, no matter what decision was made, maybe it wasn't your decision, maybe it was somebody else's, I don't care. But he's always rewriting the script. He's always got ink on the pen. He always sees, and he's like, whoop, whoop, nope. It's the GPS thing, you know, recalculating. You know? Recalculating. Recalculating. You take the wrong road, well, hey, that's, you know, my, my GPS does this, like you turn on the wrong road, and it's telling you, like, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, and then it's like, well, we're just going to go this way. So, he like, so it tells you from there, you know? But that's the way, you know, God's always rewriting. He's always rewriting, rewriting the script, okay? So Paul heard, y'all are going to die, but thank God Paul was hearing. Okay, there's a difference between... I heard something, and I'm hearing something. Because 
what you heard may not be relevant right now because now you got to hear something you know let's say Abraham heard to kill the boy but thank God he was hearing because then he then he heard different so what what I'm saying is like let's say that for example you give somebody your word on something right you make a promise to somebody because you heard from God on something and you made a promise to him what happens when you hear what happens when you hear get out of that situation because now all of a sudden you're saying well I'm going to do the Christian thing and have integrity and I'm going to stick to my promise and I'm going to do all this man if God's telling you to get out of it get out of it there's a difference between I heard and I'm hearing you know Herod got all excited whenever the, the girl came and she danced in front of him right and he got all excited he said I'll give you whatever you want and she says kill John the Baptist and he says he was sad because he had made the promise so he had to so he had to fulfill it what what it, no you know like yeah anything but that I'm not going to do murder for you you know it's um but anyway there's a difference between heard and hearing be led by the Holy Spirit don't be led by your promises by your promises all right verse 26 however we must run aground on a certain island now when the 14th night had come as we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea about midnight the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land they took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms and when they had gone a little further they took soundings again and found it to be 15 fathoms then hearing then fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come as the sailors were seeking to escape the ship when they had let down the skiff into the sea under pretense of putting out anchors from the prow so the sailors are like look let all these other people die we're out we're getting out so we're going to get in this little boat and get out of here so now we got somebody now everybody's seeking self-interest um, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers unless these men stay in the ship you can't be saved so the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off so they, they're listening now they're, they're, they're all ears so they didn't, they didn't put it up for a vote this time now they wouldn't be in this situation if they had listened to Paul 30 verses ago alright day was about to dawn Paul implored them all to take food saying today is the 14th day you have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing therefore I urge you to take nourishment for this for your own survival since not a hair will fall from you, the head of any of you so it's interesting whenever he was whenever he was prophesying doom nobody listened um, but now he's prophesying hope and they believe what he's saying now they heard these things, took bread, gave thanks to God. He, he gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. They all were encouraged and, and took food for themselves. And in all, 276 persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out the wheat into the sea. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And they let go of the anchors and left them in the sea. Um... Now, striking a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. The prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim away and escape. So notice it was soldiers, not the centurion. Now, watch the favor of God. Verse 43, But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land and the rest some on boards and some on parts of the ship and so it was that they all escaped safely to land now so Paul had favor with the centurion again now if um if you go against the stream there's a there's a, a flow to things right there's a there's a there's a there's a, a way that God set things in place and there's a flow to it. And if you get out of that flow, you're going against the current. And when you go against the current, there's going to be consequences. Now, consequences and punishment are two different things. 
that's not God's not punishing you for anything. It's just a consequence. If you if you know, I told Sunday school that this this morning, but if if you get on I fifty five north and you drive the speed limit in three, three and a half hours, you're gonna be in Memphis. Now you can say you're not going to Memphis all you want, but you're headed to Memphis. Whatever road you're on, that's where you're headed. Now, it, and you know, <laughs> I told him, I said, you know, don't, you know, well, you're going to Memphis. No, I'm not. That's just religion talking. Like, no, that's just, you're on that road. Well, whatever road you're on is where you're going. That's your destination. So if you're going against the grain of God, if you're going against the way that he set things in place, if you're going against the, the, the trajectory that he has, then yes, you're going you're gonna to end up having a hard time. But then again, it's not punishment. It's not punishment. You're not being punished because you made a bad decision. He's rewriting the script. But you heard, you heard something and you ignored it. But what are you hearing now? There's a way out. There's a way back on track. There's a, and, and, it's not, and it's not near as complicated as you think. It's not near as hard as what the devil's making you believe it is. He's rewriting the script right now to get you back on track. And you know what? He's good, and he's always good. So he, the, the, the script he's got written out is a good thing. It's a good thing. But he's like, it may feel bad. It may feel like the wrong thing to do, but you're just not familiar with it. You haven't been on that road yet. Unfamiliar roads... Or it can be can be scary, and if you've never been on that road, it it, se- it seems scary. It's not, it's not. He's he's rewriting the script for you. So, complications, chaos in your life, that's um. That's not that's that's not punishment. It's just consequences. So God says, don't speak to people in a certain way. Don't put your eyes over a certain way. Don't put this in your body. You know. You know, treat your children like they're like they're a blessing and not a hassle to you. Um, now, if you're those are those are just ways that you go. There's a certain way that you approach marriage. There's a certain way you treat your wife, and now that could be punishment. I don't know, but but no. But there's certain ways that you do things. There's certain ways that that God has put a God has put His stamp on and a trajectory toward, and that's where that's where you go. But here's where you know. Here's where I get. I think I confuse people sometimes because I, I because I do I do talk about grace a lot, and it, it, you can get confused and think that I'm saying that grace is that grace can you can just do whatever you want to. That's not what I'm that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is grace is grace is is how you stay on the road. It's not like it's it's not your license to sin. It's just how you stay on the road. It's your empowerment to not sin. Now, you have a grace to get back on the road, yes, but it doesn't mean you just go do whatever you want to do because you know why? You're not going to be punished for it. It's just a consequence. It's just a, it's just a consequence of something. Now, if you're, if you're off track, he is faithful to put you back. So my question today is, is like, what have you heard? What are you hearing? Because they're not necessarily the same thing. Man, I have a... God's telling you stuff every day. Now, we, we get... Especially people who've been in church all their life, like, we, we, learn, we learn how to ignore it. But he's talking every day. He's saying something every day. So what, is, what have you heard and what are you hearing? It may be two different things because of some dumb decisions you've made. Because you didn't respond or whatever. But again, like I'm not getting on to you for not responding. But we we're all guilty of it at some point. But I'm saying, what have you what what have you heard? What are you hearing? And and right now. Because there's there's people in this room, I know there is. There's people in this room that you're hearing something.
And I'm telling you, that's your road. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just can't find it. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter like how bad you think it was. It doesn't matter. God is in, a, in the redemption business. And maybe it's maybe you just didn't make a, a a bad decision like as far as like you sinned or something. Maybe you just maybe you heard something and you didn't do it and you know, but you should have. But I'm not saying that you're necessarily living in living in some dire sin. I'm just saying like you heard something and you didn't do it and now you're in a place that you weren't intended to be. You were supposed to go to Memphis and you're in Atlanta. Well, there's still roads to Memphis. I don't know how Memphis became the thing, but you know, it's um, I mean, it's, it's just there. But, but, let's just say that you're somewhere else. It's okay. There's a way back, and it you may have to walk it, but he may put you on an airplane. I don't know how he's gonna do it, but he's gonna do it. Um, and you know, um, my message was 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 not was not long today i said i asked my wife she said i said what what time is it because she said because usually worship lasts till 11 15 and i'm like and you know i have it time pretty good um but i do think that it's i do think it's good because i think that maybe maybe you can take a minute and maybe you can just sit there and you can think about what what are you hearing like not don't focus on what you heard what do you hear now? Um, everybody stand up. So we're going to, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, Bill was talking. I just uh, had read a um, statement on Facebook by another pastor friend of mine. And it goes with this. He said, don't defend or stay in a mistake just because you took a long time making it and have a lot invested in it. I thought, that's pretty good. That's exactly what you're saying. And then I thought, too, when he was speaking about God's, God, like a GPS recalculating, there was a thief on the cross one day that was that far from eternity in hell, and he acknowledged Christ, and God said, recalculate, and all of his eternity shifted in a moment, put him on a jet liner, to paradise it's not too late it's not too early it's just the right time to shift and obey what you're hearing and if you don't know Jesus this morning I want you to come down as I give uh, people I just want to take just an opportunity here before I release you and, and let's do what Bill asked us to do let's just say Lord Jesus come by the power of the Holy Spirit and reveal to me Areas that you're recalculating, that you're saying, we need to turn a little bit here. We need to adjust this. We need to make a complete U-turn here. If that's what you're saying to us, Lord, don't let us miss this opportunity to step into this road that you've laid out before us. Opportunity to get back on track. If we're on track, we won't miss what you have for our destiny. We want to be on track this morning and through this season. We want to stay on track. Father, come now by the power of the Holy Spirit. We just want to take just a minute and uh, just a couple minutes and, and just say this. I'm telling you, when you do this, this is amazing. Talking about a preacher. Uh, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me and show me? And then whatever pops in your mind, you trust God is guiding you. Yes, Lord. Show us, Holy Spirit. Reveal to us. Yes, Holy Spirit.
I feel some people getting back on track this morning, and I know two young people just got back on track with Jesus. Jesus is not just our Savior. He is our King. He is our Lord. What He says really does matter, and I just thank the Lord for moving this morning through that Word, through the power of the worship. His Spirit was here to change lives and transform people forever. Go out of here this week expecting to hear not depending solely on what you've heard, but expecting to hear that fresh guidance and directives from the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your people with spiritual Mickey Mouse ears that they can hear beyond what they ever thought possible. In Jesus' name, your people received them and said amen. Amen. God bless you today.